layout is the process of blocking out the basics of the scene. That can include setting up a transform or animation hierarchy. It can also involve setting up display layers, setting up a background, and camera framing. Let's begin by creating a simple transform hierarchy. I just want to link all the objects in this CAD model to a helper so that I can position and rotate all the objects at once. We'll begin by rotating and positioning all the objects close to the origin. Select all the objects in the perspective view. Then go over to the main toolbar, choose the rotate tool, and enable angle snaps. And then rotate in the perspective view around the x-axis exactly 90 degrees. Then we can switch to the move tool. We want to position the object so that it's really close to the origin. In the left view, Right-click in that view so you don't lose the selection. Then move all the objects closer to the origin. We can reframe the left view with the middle mouse button. And also move the objects up. And in order to make sure that we're exactly sitting on that ground plane, we can get in closer with Control, Alt, and middle mouse button. And then click and drag to move all the objects up or down. You may need to drag left to right, but as long as the Y axis of the current viewport is active, and you can adjust all those objects in a very precise fashion. Okay, so now everything is sitting directly on the ground plane, and we can reframe every viewport. There's a keyboard shortcut for that, which is Control Shift Z. That's going to zoom extends all in all viewports. Now we're ready to create a helper object. Go over to the Create panel to Helpers and click on the Point button. Click anywhere in the perspective view to create that point helper. Then right-click to exit point creation. We can go to the Modify panel, change the size, maybe reduce that down to, let's say, 10 centimeters, and position it exactly at the origin. We've still got the Move tool active, so down in the Transform Type In area, we can just plug in values for X and Y, Set the X value to 0, press Tab. Set the Y value to 0, and press Enter. Now that helper is positioned exactly at the origin. We can rename it as well. Let's call it Radio Helper. Now we want to link all of those objects to that helper, so we can use the helper to move and rotate all the objects as a unit. And there are many ways to do that. I'm going to use the Scene Explorer. So open that up again. Toggle Scene Explorer on the main toolbar. When the Scene Explorer opens, it's going to show the selected object at the top here, so we may need to scroll around in order to find all the other objects. So let's select everything except for that helper. Select the first object, scroll down, hold down Shift, select the last object, and we can link them all to the radio helper by simply dragging and dropping them on top of that radio helper. Click and drag all of those onto the radio helper, release the mouse, and now they've all been parented. So we've got a hierarchy here. We can test that by selecting the radio helper in any viewport, and if we position it with the move gizmo, we see all those child objects follow. Okay, I'll undo that with Control Z. All right, so we've got our simple hierarchy, and that'll allow us to stage the object. So, for example, I might want to rotate it so that it's not exactly square or orthogonal to the world. I can grab the Rotate tool, and once again, with angle snaps turned on, I can rotate in the perspective view around the z-axis, and I'll rotate by 15 degrees. We can orbit around with Alt and Middle Mouse and get an idea of what this will look like when we create a camera. We've got our simple transform hierarchy set up. Now let's organize the display layers and all the naming of the objects. So let's go into the Layer Explorer. We can open that up from the main toolbar. And that's going to appear at the bottom of the Command Panel by default. I want to drag this out and undock it, make it a little bit larger. In the Layer Explorer, I want to start to organize my scene. I've got a default layer, and I've got the Ham Radio layer. And this one was created when I imported the CAD document. We can open up the layer hierarchy and see that we've got a whole bunch of nested layers. You can organize this in many different ways. However, I don't recommend nested layers. 
So really, I recommend that you select all the objects and put them into a new layer. And that is easy to accomplish. Just go up to the top layer, Ham Radio, right click and choose Select Child Nodes. And that selects all the objects. We don't want to select the layers themselves, so we can deselect those. Hold down Control and deselect anything that has a layer icon. And now I've just selected all the objects, and those have got a circle next to them indicating their geometry. With all those objects selected, I can create a new layer from the selection. Click the Create New Layer button, and let's rename this new layer. We'll call it Radio. A newly created layer is made active, and that means that any new objects we create will be dropped into this active layer. We want to make the default layer active once again. These other layers that are left over can just be deleted. We can select all of those, right-click, and choose Delete. And we've got one more here we need to delete. Now we've just got two layers, the default layer, which has nothing in it except the radio helper, and then the radio, which has all of our body objects. I do recommend that you rename everything. And to assist in that process, you can use the Renamer tool. So for example, I can get in close here on these buttons. I'll select one of those and then zoom in with the Z key. We can select a bunch of buttons. I'll zoom out again with Control, Alt, and Middle Mouse button and just Control click on all of these buttons one at a time. Once I've selected all of those and they're highlighted here, we can rename them all at once. Let's go to the Tools menu and within here we'll see Rename Objects. We need to enter a base name. Let's call it button and put an underscore after that to separate it from the numbers because we want these to be numbered. So enable numbered and set the base number or the starting number to one. Click rename and now all those buttons have been renamed one through 16. All right, so you'll want to continue that process renaming all the objects so you'll be able to distinguish them between one another when you're assigning materials.